Hello and welcome to this course on optical spectroscopy and microscopy. Uh, in the last lecture, we were talking about uh, how to illuminate the sample in uh, such that we do not introduce any artificial contrast or in a crude sense, we were talking about how to separate the uh, idea of illuminating the sample and still not be able to form the image of the, the light source itself onto the sample. And uh, we were talking about a critical illumination principle where, whereby uh, people, I mean, whereby people, um, I mean, um, whereby the sample when they were, uh, when uh, <coughs> uh, it was illuminated, um, the image of the filament itself was formed onto the sample plane, okay. And that kind of illumination scheme, uh, can we have this, yeah. So, the just to um, rehash your memory. So, this kind of an image in, uh, illumination scheme wherein we use this light source and then um, use a simple <coughs> condenser lens to um, illuminate the sample, intensify the light around the sample uh, is called as a critical illumination. The problem as we saw in the last class is that um, it introduces an artificial uh, contrast. So, to avoid that, um, Kohler came up with this uh, rational, that uh, August Kohler came up with this rational, wherein he said that let us not image the filament itself, all we need is the photons. So, let us create a, um, a uniformly illuminated spot, right. It is a aperture, it is an aperture, uniformly illuminated aperture and let us image that uniformly illuminated aperture onto the sample, okay. That was achieved using a collection assembly which consisted of the light source um, uh, reflector, contrary reflector and the collection lens um, put in such, I uh, mean placed such that uh, it, they all are going to illuminate the uh, field diaphragm uniformly, okay. So, once you have this field diaphragm illuminated uniformly, then the job of um, illuminating the sample becomes much easier, wherein he would uh, have a condenser lens uh, image this field diaphragm, right, the light coming out from the field diaphragm or the field diaphragm itself onto the sample plane. Now, if you think about it, since at the field diaphragm, you do not have the image of the uh, filament, right. The way this is done, the uh, field, uh, I mean the image of this filament is formed at infinity uh, after this lens, right. So, uh, because they are at focus, right. We know that we just saw the geometric optics um, in the previous class, where if you had to place the um, <coughs> Um, the object on to the um, or the focus, then um, your um, uh, image will be formed at infinity, right. So, um, so that way, so the um, point here is we do not need to, um, uh, uh, so the, the, the we do not have to worry about the image per se of the um, filament, but what we do have is that all the photons that are emanating from here as, as much as we could collect um, would be going through, coming through this aperture and it will be bright. That is actually illuminating the sample, so it is uniform illumination. Now, what we could actually have is lens 1, objective lens taking a point just the way we drew the optical diagram and then imaging that point onto a place that is between the focal length and the length uh, 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 within the focal length of the eyepiece, okay. The effect, um, the effect being that you generate an um, An, an, an image of this um, of this point uh, 
of um, this point on the uh, as a virtual image all right. So, um, <coughs> now that uh, were to be uh, very fine and good until um, uh, people want until uh, people wanted to until a point where people wanted to correct for various different uh, problems that the lens per se would pose because uh, lens is not an I mean lens by itself um, has its own uh, limitations in when it comes to the um, uh, uniformity I mean uh, various degrees of uh, um, focus of, uh, defects that are originate from the focus of now in uh, so this is this is our objective lens by definition because it's close to the sample in a modern day objective uh, lens um, what uh, you would see is that it's far from a one simple lens and that's exactly why when we actually looked at this objective lens it's such a big object it's not a uh, this is not a very simple one um, Le, uh, thing simple lens, but it is a very extended uh, pretty extended object. So, now in this pretty extended object there are quite a few parameters that is written on to this objective lens and what we are going to do is that we are going to understand what, what each of this uh, is and why is that important. Okay. So, to start with we will uh, um, write down in parallel what, um, what these guys are, uh, what, uh, what these parameters are and how do we make use of them. Um, no, can we have the lens? How we make use of them uh, in our uh, system. So, now uh, if you look at the objective lens, the first uh, place uh, is usually they will have their brand name or the in this case it is a it is a country of origin Japan and in this case it is a Zeiss. So, in this lens uh, the first one that you see is the country name we saw then the second is the description of the type of this lens. Now, here uh, what we have is Excel plan N. Okay. So, let us look at uh, I mean uh, we will write down we will remember it is a plan uh, objective. So, that is what um, on the other hand um, here you see that it is a W let us not worry about that plan apochromat alright. In here you see it is plan F L alright. So, we have three kinds of lenses. So, let us mark it down one uh, is plan Other is plan apo and third is plan floor. Okay. So now, apart from this, we also have few other um, illustrations on the objective lens. So, if you look at um, the first objective lens, you see that. Um, you have a number that is uh, written as 25 x slash 1.05 um, w m p. Okay. I am not sure if I can people can see, but uh, so you just take it from me it is a 1.05 w m p. Okay. On the other hand, so this uh, for want of space they have written it on the other side where you have 63 x 1.0 with i r. Okay. So, while the uh, plan f l you had you have 4 x 0 0.13 okay, p h l. So, we will concentrate on this numbers first. So, our plan had uh, a number written 4 x and 0 0.13 while the plan apo has 
63x 1.0 while on the other hand this has 25x and 1.05 in addition you also have uh, you also saw um, in um, the apo it's a vis ir and here it is mp okay and um, in both the so now uh, you can also see that apart from these numbers we also have the letter w mentioned on the um, uh, this um, 20, uh, excel plan with uh, w m p coming up on there while um, w coming up on the um, objective lens of uh, right here w plan and this one does not have any w here okay not not does uh, w not uh, nothing is written here you can actually uh, search all around nothing will be written here so each of them have a very definite meaning so we will also point out that uh, nothing so nothing this one has a w and this one also has a w so now as probably you would have uh, guessed by now uh, this uh, 4x 63x and 25x corresponds to the um, magnification magnification uh, we will see that in a detail it uh, this numbers by themselves do not have much sense by except uh, if you have to say a few other things uh, and then while uh, the 0 0.13 1 1.0 and 1.05 corresponds to numerical aperture na and this ir and mp that tells you the wavelength regions uh, or the regions that uh, that it's a uh, that transmission is optimized for right so that there is a some amount of light that you are going to put through this objective lens how much of that is going to come out right so that uh, is a very critical parameter right because you don't want to eat up lot of your incident light and um, so for that reason we need to do that and this w um, I am just going to state it, I am just stating this uh, facts here, we will uh, see um, what this um, means in principles um, in a minute. So this W tells you the kind of immersion medium that we will be using, type of immersion media that we will be using. So, um, w here means water and so we will be using a water immersion media so um, <clears throat> and then not mentioning anything right dash right so just like this mic uh, microscope objective thus uh, this one uh, it does not require uh, any immersion media right that is what it means to say that uh, we do not have to mention it is also called as air objectives they are also called as air objectives because they do not they expect air to be present and nothing else okay. Um, <coughs> so now what uh, what are all these different numbers we we said that these different numbers mean these um, um, represent these different terms what do they mean okay. Now the first thing regarding the magnification so now let us go back to our uh, original diagram of uh, super simplified um, microscope system where uh, what we have done is that we have taken the so one part the part on the left hand side of the sample the way I have drawn it um, is there to illuminate the sample and the right hand side part of it is there to um, 
image the sample onto your eye or you could actually think of having a camera and then the system changes the IPs and uh, things like that will change, but the point is it is for capturing the sample representation of the sample which is the image. So, now in this part uh, originally where as it was uh, designed um, in olden days these objective lenses were designed such that if you were to have a sample just at the vicinity of the focus they would make the image at about 160 um, um, millimeters okay it is about 16 centimeters from the back flange of the objective. Now, what is the back flange? Now, let us look at this, uh, uh, we will take any of this, but I am just going to take the biggest one easier to explain. So, now if you look at the uh, this objective here um, or this uh, objective here, now um, you can uh, see that uh, there are um, these um, numbers and bodies. Uh, numbers and bodies that are written and then on the top here in the brass uh, what you see is the um, thread right you just a fine um, thread which can actually take in which can actually. Um, so, now imagine this is a uh, right now this is a cap lid. So, now this were to be the object uh, lens body I mean microscope body. So, you would actually have the lens. Um, hanging up um, like this. Okay, this is the microscope uh, body, and then the lens held. So now that is held through this threads, through these threads on the uh, microscope uh, on the objective and the counterpart on the microscope uh, body. Now that's called as the flange, right? There's a flange that actually holds the uh, objective. So, from that uh, point onwards it is designed to have these images formed at 160 um, uh, uh, millimeters. Now, these modern day microscopes are far from that I mean they are a different breed and um, you know that they are of a different breed because of uh, some inscriptions. We will go back to that inscription a little later after this explanation. Um, and what, how are they different? They are different in that the if you look at the ray diagram, they no longer form at 160 millimeters, but they would form the image only at infinity. Or in other words, uh, the beam is um, uh, uh, okay. So let's. Uh, Erase this. I am going to use a different color for representing the uh, this uh, new modern um, microscopes. They form the image at infinity. Okay, so they expect the image to be formed at infinity, or in other words, you can say that the beam coming out of those lenses are supposed thought are are parallel. Okay, so which means if they have to operate with the principle of hey look if, you, if, if, if they form at infinity, but I re in the in my lab I need to be able to see it in the uh, in my um, with my eyes many times right. So, then how do we do that right the way you do that is by uh, introducing a new lens called as a tube lens okay. So, and the the tube lens together with the objective acts such that it forms this image um, such, the, um, such that it is within the focus of the eyepiece. So, that we form the same uh, virtual image just like the olden microscope. Now, these objectives that are expected to form the image at the infinity are called as infinity corrected objectives. Now, um, now how do I know given an objective it is infinity corrected or something else? 
Now again let us go back and look at uh, these inscriptions. Now you see here the number uh, infinity is inscribed on here that tells you that this is an infinity corrected objective again um, same here you see that infinity being inscribed here this is again an infinity corrected objective and you see the infinity slash minus. So, the minus is because the it is an error objective it does not expect anything, but it is infinity because it infinity corrected objective. So, that is uh, uh, that is about infinity correction, but then I talked to you about the tube lens right to tube lens together with the objective lens forming the um, image. Um, such that um, it can uh, form I mean, when you look through the eyepiece you can form the virtual image in the eye sorry uh, it, it can create a virtual image such that you can form uh, an image in the uh, retina of the eye. <coughs> so, now the magnification right we wrote down the magnification of different um, objective lenses right 4 x 63 x and 25 x. Now, that as uh, that uh, attains the meaning Okay, only with respect to the tube lens that we are actually using. So, then we if I give you this objective just a simple objective like this and then it says 25 x and uh, if you were to construct an imaging system using this objective would it give you a 25 x magnification? No, it is not given it is it will give you a 25 x magnification if you use this in combination with a specified tube lens. Okay. So, now why is that right because you know that um, uh, let us look, look back at the uh, ray diagram you know that without the tube lens there is no image formation by the objective lens at all because it is a parallel beam that is coming out from the back aperture. Now, look at the uh, you have the back aperture and this there is no image formation that you can have the fact that you are seeing some image through the objective lens right here is because the objective lens right forms an infinite um, um, uh, beam which is then focused by the camera onto the sensor there is a lens on the camera. If I take it away then you would not see any image at all it is just the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, lens on the camera allows you to be able to actually form it. I mean you would uh, that is uh, true when you actually look at um, um, uh, any system. Um, uh, uh, through the objective. So, now what we uh, have to do is that we need to know okay, if I have to use this lens uh, with this 25 x then what kind of a tube lens do I need to use it. So, to uh, that tube lens uh, varies from um, the manufacturer to manufacturer. Now, here we have two of the manufacturers I told you these are dark in colors um, and uh, it just says Japan it is the Olympus uh, lens objective lenses and this is uh, Zeiss. I told you apart from this there are two other um, manufacturer that uh, generates the microscope I mean that manufactures the microscope and and the, the tube lens uh, focal length is very standard it is a uh, um, that is fixed you do not uh, they do not change it. So, that um, when somebody changes the objective lens in their own microscope there is a finite definition of what the magnification is. So, uh, just to um, put out the numbers. So, Leica uh, so sorry I think um, Leica the manufacturer uh, it is still the same okay. and Nikon okay uh, these objectives I do not have, but uh, they sorry uh, K O N uh, they uh, design their microscope objective assuming at or uh, having a tube lens of 200 millimeter in mind. Okay. So, all the design parameters of their objective lens 
uh, are um, uh, assuming that um, the tube lens will be of 200 millimeter uh, focal length. So, and um, Olympus right the two dark objectives that we have seen they assume the focal length to I mean they, their tube lens is 180 the design of the tube lens is uh, such that it is 180 fo uh, millimeters and Zeiss uh, designs their objectives with 165 millimeter um, uh, focal length tube lenses. Okay. So, now <coughs> why is this important? Now, remember I told you that the magnification is irrelevant without um, something else right without uh, because they are they form at infinity there is no image itself. So, only with respect to the tube lens they form the image. So, now the objective lens and tube lens together form a imaging system or are in a uh, two lens system and, and then the magnification there is defined by the ratio of their focal lengths. So, you would get a 25 x magnification with this objective lens only and only if you had to use a 180 millimeter uh, focal length lens. So, um, if you are to estimate the focal length of the objective lens, so then uh, we define I mean the magnification is defined as <coughs> the focal length of the tube lens divided by focal length of the objective. So, for example, if I want to know the focal length of the of um, this particular objective. Okay. Can we go? Uh, so, if I want to know the focal length of this particular objective, then um, um, we will go in go and plug in this numbers. The focal length of the tube length is uh, the design is designed around 180 millimeters. So, we are writing everything in millimeters. So, that is um, 180 and focal length of the objective would be 180 divided by 25 and you have um, 6 uh, 7 um, point um, so uh, uh, I just repeat uh, the focal length of the objective is equal to 180 millimeters so this is in millimeters uh, by 25 which is equal to 7.2 millimeters now that's good we know the focal length of the objective it is very much very useful in many applications where we have to actually design an imaging system around the objective lens. However, there is one uh, uh, catch to this whole problem that is I know it is 7.2, but 7.2 from where because if you look at the objective lens it is a big long fat objective object. So, is it 7.2 from the front back? or somewhere in the back or somewhere in the middle. Um, how do we how do I know and what is um, and uh, how do we overcome that right. We will see that in the next lecture.